kept hearing all the hype about bench cookies. And since I had a rolling cart, I thought perhaps I should start my gantry build with a, uh, a rolling cart cookie. I don't know if it really improves woodworking or not, but it's not a bad way to begin. Mmm. Nine essential vitamins. So, step one. Get yourself some cookies. Get yourself a cold glass of milk. Go out to your garage. And uh, let's, let's put this CNC together. Uh, all right. I will save my nutrition for later. This cart is going to be the platform on which I'm going to build my CNC. It's 24 by 48 inches. If you do this type of CNC design, you can have a platform that's mobile. Now this is very different than my first CNC. This is more like what you see with a lot of 3D printers. They have a central platform that moves. You could have this whatever width you want. You're going to put your ball screw in the center that's going to be hooked to that board. You could go all the way out, spread these rails all the way to the very end. So you get a tremendous amount of capability with a relatively small space. To... On my design, I'm actually gonna have boards that are gonna come up right here and on this other side, and I'm gonna mount my X gantry across the middle of this board. So what does that do for us? Well, it means that we can take a board and set it across our bearings. Of course, we'll put uh, screw our ball nut housing on there. But as you can see, that allows this entire support platform to move up and down. That means we can put an incredibly wide board across here and uh, machine it out. And you may not fully appreciate what that'll do for you if you're not uh, familiar with CNC, but because this is a pass-through area, we can mount boards and we can pass them through. As long as we have some support out here to hold up the board, we can mill incredibly long things and we have a big Y-axis. So that means we can mill very, very large CNC projects through a process called tiling. So the ends of this table, we're gonna have a couple boards that are gonna be coming up like so. I'll actually have them mounted just off the edge of the table and we'll have them bracketed in and across the, the main area that spans this gap, we're going to fix our x-axis that will put that router uh, along. So let me just show you like, so it's gonna be like this. This plate will float right on that main x-axis. What I have here is a template that we designed earlier in OpenSCAD. And you see that we have our four screw holes for our ball nut housing. We have our holes for our bearing blocks. And then we have the mounting holes for our router. And what I've done is I've taken this, which is was only in, I think it's about six millimeter plywood, which is not sufficient strength for my CNC router. And I upgraded it significantly. So here we have our new gantry. It's on three quarter inch plywood. And you'll notice the holes there's quite a few more that I've added. I've added extra mounting holes uh, above here and in here and here for jigs. You certainly don't have to start that way, but it, it totally made sense for me with my CNC because it was so easy to machine it. Here's a huge tip. When you're drilling out your holes, do your countersink for each of the screws in advance. You want these so that when you screw them in, they're below the surface. You can see the ball nut housing. Even though I counter sunk the holes, I didn't go deep enough. I think if I did it again, I would do a four and a half millimeter or so. A particular piece of plywood was like 18.59 millimeters thick. It still gives plenty of support along here. The router itself, you can see that I've got it mounted. I've got the threaded inserts, and I'll show you how to install those. This is a threaded insert that will take a quarter inch bolt, 20 thread count, 
And to install these, all you have to do is put it in the hole that you have made. And then you want to try to keep this with pressure down as vertical as possible until the threads catch. So it's a little tricky sometimes getting the initial threads and it will kind of straighten itself out. So it's, it's fairly forgiving. Like so. And that's all there is to putting in a threaded insert. These I got off of Amazon, a pack of 100 was seven bucks. Uh, if you buy these in the big box store, they'll charge you like, you know, about a buck a piece. So $100 or $7 for 100. So I would highly recommend you look at somewhere to get them in bulk. When all you have is a hammer and there's no more cookies in your garage, everything looks like a nail. It kind of, kind of frustrated when you run out of cookies before you run out of CNC projects. Um, really makes you want to go get yourself another glass of milk and head to the store and get some more cookies. I think with all the calories that I'm burning off, pounding these inserts in, that perhaps it would be better if I uh, had some calories and cookies. And needless to say, you're going to fill it out all the way up. All of those that I have here are for all the mount holes for our router mount, so we can go up and down. And you're just going to fill it out, and literally, it's that easy. So that's a real way to build a CNC is to have snacks out in your garage where chocolate macadamia, uh, chocolate chip cookies, crispy, ice cold milk, yogurt.